you physicists, you scientists, you guys are know-it-alls, right? How will we compute in the future? Well, we have to go to the next level. We have to be able to compute with the atom itself. Google's quantum computer, Sycamore, has been making waves in the tech world and for good reason. In 2019, it achieved something called quantum supremacy, which is a fancy way of saying it did a task so complex that the world's most advanced classical computer would need about 10,000 years to complete it. Sycamore did it in just 200 seconds. Now, let me ask you a question. Does Mother Nature use zeros and ones, zeros and ones? Imagine trying to solve a puzzle that everyone says will take an eternity and you do it over a coffee break. That's the level of achievement we're talking about here. This wasn't just any task. Sycamore was verifying the randomness of numbers produced by a quantum circuit. It might sound like a party trick, but it's a core demonstration of what makes quantum computing so revolutionary. It can tackle problems so big and complex that they're currently out of reach for our conventional computers. A quantum computer, I think, will basically change how we do everything. Okay. Everything will be in a different level. Now let's talk about what makes Sycamore tick. It's equipped with 54 qubits, which are the quantum version of computer bits, though during its moment of fame, one was taking a break, leaving 53 qubits to handle the computation. These aren't your regular bits, they're made from superconducting circuits and can be controlled and read out electronically. What's really cool is how these qubits are arranged. They're set up in a two-dimensional grid that allows for high connectivity, making it easier for them to interact and solve complex quantum algorithms. However, quantum systems, including Sycamore, are a bit like high-performance athletes. They're incredibly capable, but also prone to errors. <laughs> what is not a challenge? Everything is a challenge, yeah. The error rate of quantum gates, which are operations on qubits, is critically low in Sycamore. This is important because it means Sycamore can handle the intricate dance of quantum computations without stepping on its own toes too often. One might wonder what this all means for the future. The type of problem Sycamore solved opens the door to future applications in material science and even complex system simulations, areas where classical computers struggle because of the sheer size of the computational space. But what about the energy it takes to run something as powerful as Sycamore? You might be surprised to learn that quantum processors like Sycamore are quite energy efficient, especially when compared to their classical counterparts. The operations within a quantum computer governed by the principles of quantum mechanics don't require the energy-intensive electrical currents that classical computers do. Most of the energy goes into keeping the quantum processor in the right environment rather than the computations themselves. When we compare the energy footprint, classical supercomputers like Summit can gulp down around 10 megawatt of power. In contrast, the direct operational energy use of a quantum computer like Sycamore is significantly lower for the computational tasks themselves. However, if we consider the whole system, including the cooling, the story gets a bit more complex. Even so, the energy efficiency of quantum computers points towards a more sustainable form of computing, especially as we refine the technology further. Continuing our journey into the fascinating world of quantum computing with Google's Sycamore, let's dive into one of the most critical components of its operation, the cooling system. The heart of this system is something known as a dilution refrigerator. These are not your average refrigerators. They use a mixture of helium-3 and helium-4 isotopes to achieve temperatures close to absolute zero. That's less than 100 millikelvin or a chilling minus 273 Celsius. The science behind it, called dilution refrigeration, takes advantage of the unique thermodynamic properties of these helium isotopes to cool the system effectively. This ultra-cold environment is vital for the qubits to maintain their coherence, allowing them to perform quantum operations without the interference of thermal energy. The sophistication of dilution refrigerators makes them akin to engineering marvels. Imagine creating a place within our labs that's colder than the vast expanses of outer space. These refrigerators manage to do just that, becoming one of the few places in the universe where such extreme conditions are artificially maintained. This isn't just for the sake of breaking records. Operating at these frigid temperatures is essential for reducing noise and quantum decoherence, which in turn preserves the qubit's quantum states, 
ensuring the accuracy and reliability of the quantum computations. But what's truly remarkable is the environment within these dilution refrigerators. The quantum processor, along with its qubits, is suspended in a carefully engineered environment that shields it from external magnetic fields, cosmic rays and even stray photons. This isolation is crucial. It's what allows the quantum processor to preserve the delicate quantum states of the qubits during computation, akin to performing a high-wire act without a safety net, where even the slightest interference could have significant consequences. As we look to the future, the quest for even more efficient quantum computing continues, with researchers exploring new cooling technologies. The goal here is to reduce the energy requirements of quantum computing systems further. Through advances in material science and low-temperature physics, we might see refrigeration methods that allow larger quantum processors to operate at these critical low temperatures with less energy, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in quantum computing even further. Now let's touch upon how data is stored in a quantum computer like Sycamore. Unlike classical computing, where data is stored as either zeros or ones, quantum computing uses qubits. Qubits can exist in a state of zero, one or both simultaneously, thanks to a principle called superposition. This ability to be in multiple states at once allows for the representation and manipulation of a vast amount of information, with a relatively small number of qubits showcasing the power and potential of quantum computing to revolutionize how we process information in the future. As we delve deeper into the realm of quantum computing with marvels like Google's Sycamore leading the charge, it's hard not to be captivated by the sheer potential of what lies ahead. The achievement of quantum supremacy, where Sycamore outperformed the world's most advanced classical computer in a specific task, is just the tip of the iceberg. It introduces us to the quantum advantage in the unseen, a theory that suggests quantum computers might unlock solutions to problems so complex and vast that they're currently beyond our imagination. Imagine standing at the edge of a vast ocean of computational possibilities where quantum computing could redefine fields like cryptography by both challenging current security methods and pioneering new forms of secure communication. Drawing a parallel from history, Sycamore's achievement is reminiscent of the Wright brothers' first powered flight in 1903. Just as their invention opened the skies to new possibilities, Quantum computing promises to unlock new dimensions in computation, encryption and problem solving. Yet much like the early days of aviation, quantum computing is in its nascent stages, facing significant hurdles and errors. However, just as aviation evolved to revolutionize our world, the potential of quantum computing to transform the digital landscape is immense, marking the dawn of a new era in technology. But with great power comes great responsibility, and the advent of quantum computing brings a spectrum of risks and dangers that warrant close attention. At the forefront is the potential for cryptographic security breakdowns. Quantum computers, with their ability to run algorithms like Shaw's, pose a threat to the cryptographic systems safeguarding our digital world, including banking, communications, and online information. This capability to decrypt currently secure data underscores the urgent need for quantum-resistant cryptographic methods to protect our digital infrastructure. Moreover, the risk to data privacy cannot be overstated. The prospect of quantum computers retroactively decrypting sensitive personal, financial and national security information is a stark reminder of the potential for privacy erosion. This scenario raises alarms not just for individual privacy, but also highlights the risks of corporate and state-level espionage in a quantum computing age. The global race towards quantum supremacy also brings geopolitical considerations into play. As nations and corporations vie for dominance in this emerging field, the balance of power on the international stage could shift dramatically. The entity that first achieves a fully operational, large-scale quantum computer will gain unprecedented advantages in intelligence, military capabilities and economic power, potentially reshaping global security dynamics. Lastly, the introduction of quantum computing is set to revolutionize algorithm development and artificial intelligence. However, this new paradigm also brings with it the potential for unforeseen vulnerabilities. The unpredictable nature of quantum AI algorithms could lead to risks in critical decision-making processes, particularly in areas such as autonomous vehicles and weapon systems, where the stakes are exceptionally high. 
As we stand on the brink of this quantum computing frontier, it's clear that while the possibilities are boundless, so too are the challenges and risks. Navigating this landscape will require not just technological innovation, but also ethical consideration, global cooperation, and a commitment to developing safeguards that ensure the benefits of quantum computing are realized while minimizing its potential dangers.